In this video, we're gonna cover five advanced techniques to unlock your push three to a whole new level. Push three is a deep piece of hardware, and because of that, it can be difficult to navigate some of the more advanced workflows. Sometimes it can feel as though you're stuck using push three in the workflow that it has for you. So by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to unlock push three to a whole other level and really make it your own. Hey yo, it's Alex from Edit My Music. I'm an artist, producer, and certified audio engineer here to help you level up your music and unlock your creativity. All right, so in this video, I'm going to reveal, number one, what these advanced techniques are, number two, the step-by-step -step processes on how to do them, and number three, how you can really make these workflows your own. To start though, we need to talk about the importance of designing expressive instruments, which all of these workflows are kind of based on. So when I started to design expressive instruments, it was a total, complete game changer for me. I used to spend hours scrolling through sounds, presets, as I was working on a track. Over time, I realized that the option overwhelm and the sea of mediocre sounds and presets would actually make me feel anxious and frustrated and throw me completely out of my creative flow. That all changed once I discovered the Push and Ableton, where I could then leverage my existing skills as a guitarist and playing instruments and start designing my own instruments with Push push to play them into Ableton. So the question that you're probably asking yourself at this point is why even bother designing expressive instruments? You might not even play an instrument. Maybe that's not the way you're used to working. What's the whole point? Why are you going on about this? The reason is that designing expressive instruments also creates intentional constraints. And those intentional constraints actually help you be more creative because limitations breed creativity. There's a great quote that encapsulates this that I always share and I'll share it again, is that the enemy of art is the absence of limitations. So if we don't limit ourselves in the beginning and we just open ourselves up to being able to use any sound under the sun and any preset, it's going to stifle your creativity. Another reason is that designing and setting up instruments in advance will avoid the option overwhelm and wasting your time scrolling through presets and trying to find good sounds because you've designed good sounds right off the bat. And finally, it helps you practice going deep with less tools so you can really master them. Because if you only have four or five really expressive and well-designed instruments, the more you practice and the more you use them, the more they'll become familiar and you'll start to build muscle memory with how they work and their main parameters and how it sounds, etc. This is actually the first stage in my streamlined music making system that I personally use and teach my clients. If you wanna learn how to use it and level up your music and learn more about the system, you can check out the masterclass with the link below to learn more. All right, so number one is controlling external instruments, okay? Push three can control anything that can receive MIDI performance data. So this is a great way to leverage the sounds in something like an external synth or drum machine, or if you stumble across some epic old school synth when you're in the studio and you have your Push 3 with you so that you can capture its essence. So Push 3 can pretty much eat the soul of any other external music device that can accept MIDI to capture its sound. All right, before we go there, let me show you a hidden benefit in doing this that a lot of people don't talk about. So personally, I come from playing guitar, which is why I love playing the push three pads, okay? There's a lot of overlap between the pads and the neck of a guitar or a bass, right? And very often in the production space, people will say that you should learn piano as a producer, which is not a bad idea, but personally, I just use push because it's a zillion times easier to play and you have a wealth of music theory and guidance at your fingertips, okay? I also suck at keyboards and I'm just not patient enough to learn it. But if you're watching this video, I'm guessing that you have push three or push two and most likely you like the pads. So it makes sense to leverage the pads and playing them instead of forcing yourself to learn keyboards if you're not already a pianist or keyboard player and just leverage that, you know what I'm saying? It's so much easier, okay? So let's go ahead and set it up. So I'm gonna just go ahead and move to my overhead here and walk you through setting this up. So the first thing that we wanna do is hit our little gear icon to go into our settings, okay? And then from here, we're gonna go to the MIDI tab. And while we're here, we have to make sure that the track button is turned on so that we can send MIDI CC messages out of push. So from here, we got to make sure that we have the right connections in place. So just to quickly recap what's going on here, we have a MIDI track with an external instrument device loaded onto it that is allowing us to send MIDI out of the USB port at the back of push three into the USB port of OP1. And then we have the 
audio output of the OP1 being fed back into the input one and two of push three, okay? And this is where I have those settings. I'm sending out to the OP MIDI one and I'm receiving audio from channel one and two. And now if I go to note mode on this MIDI track, these pads are playing the brains of the OP1. The next thing that I did is created an empty audio track, okay? And then I went to the mixer view and I clicked it again to get to track mixer view. And here I decided to make the input for this audio track, the MIDI track that we just created. Okay. So now we are feeding the audio out of that MIDI track into a new audio track. And the reason for this is going to be our first technique here. What I've done is I've created a MIDI loop and I'm going to change the parameters of the OP1 while that MIDI loop is looping and recording the output. I'm going to create a bunch of different clips for cool one shots of drum sounds of whatever catches my ear using this MIDI loop, as well as maybe just playing some stuff in. Number two, let's talk about recording external samples. So next, let's go a little bit deeper into push three sampling features. Instead of recording audio from external instruments, such as the OP-1, an external synth, an external drum machine, you can just record external sound in general. So enter the microphone. Oh yeah, we're going to check out this Apex 495, which is a battery powered condenser microphone so that we can sample stuff into push three cool beans. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the overhead here. And the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and create audio track. So I'm just gonna hit plus. We're gonna go to audio track and we're just gonna load the default audio track. Boom, three new audio tracks. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and just record random stuff that I can find around here. I got a couple items. We're gonna do some more stuff, have some fun. So the first step there is I have this microphone plugged in. I could just sample using this microphone but I'm gonna go ahead and walk us through setting up this new guy, all right? So let's crack this open. Impulse bought this at <laughs> Long McQuaid because like, oh, that's a battery powered condenser microphone that we can totally use for sampling stuff. So we're gonna not eat the do not eat thing, as tempting as it might be. You know, if someone tells you do not eat this, you're kind of like, I kind of want to eat this now. Batteries not included for reals though. Cool. So let's uh, set it up here. Now we recorded a bunch of awesome samples and now we can take advantage of the editing features in push to start editing some of these samples. Okay, see what we got here. Okay, so there is our bottle and I just kind of want to get it at the beginning and then we're also going to do that with the end holding shift. There we go. Cool. We're going to transpose this way down. Cool. So that's our sample. Let's go ahead and select this guy. All right. See what's going on with this guy. Can you hear my daughter in the back? Amazing. All right. So now we have a bunch of pretty cool samples. We edited them a little bit. And now what I want to do is get these onto a drum rack. So what we could do is select a specific clip and then convert it to a drum pad and do them one at a time. But that would probably take a while, but it's good to know that you have that option. You can also convert it to a simpler. But what we're gonna do is instead, we're gonna get out of here and I'm gonna go ahead and add a new track, a MIDI track. We're gonna go to drums and we're gonna load a default drum rack. Okay, and I'm just gonna load that onto a new track. Okay, and then we're gonna go to note mode. So now we have just an empty drum rack. And what I'm gonna do here is make sure to select this pad selector. So now we're looking at this specific pad. I'm gonna hit the hot swap button to load a sample here. And instead of going into the samples, I'm just gonna go back all the way to the top directory to go to current project, samples, recorded. So now we have all the samples that we have recorded so far that we can load into our drum rack. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, number three, we're talking about the prepared push soundscape, as I like to call it. And a while ago, I really got into Mad Zack, who's like an Ableton god, pretty much. And I got into a lot of his sample packs where he's a really a pro at creating the foundations of a whole song to, to be able to jam and perform with live 
And I took that idea to help me get into flow even faster because if you kind of set something up ahead of time, it will give you so much momentum to get into flow really quickly. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the best samples that we have, find the best cool vibey parts, duplicate them, modify them, play around with them to really prepare the push pads to be very easy to play and get into a vibe. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is taken my favorite samples, the best ones that we recorded, and put them into pads of a drum rack to create what I like to call prepared pads where we can play them in an interesting way, okay? And a few things to keep in mind when you're doing this type of thing is that you can go into the simpler's ADSR response, okay? So for example, for this kind of kick drum that I created, if I open the simpler device, uh, you can get into all of the parameters for envelopes, such as a volume envelope. You can go over here for filter envelope, which I played around with, and a pitch envelope, which creates that little bit of a click at the beginning. So you can really get in the nitty gritty and start sculpting these sounds to get them closer to what you want, right? So these bottle sounds have become my kick samples, okay? And I did the same thing with all of these other samples. I have this one single bottle hit that I have found and I just took my favorite one and that's gonna be like my hi-hat. I have another one or this is where I was hitting the bottle at a different place. So now we have two kind of different percussive things that I like to use as hi-hats. And I tend to lay out my pads in a symmetrical way so that they're easier to play. And then for my snares, I have these key samples that I have for gate. Okay, so I went in there, selected the sample, I transposed it a little bit so that it has a little bit of impact. So now we can do stuff like this, right? So I've got a drum kit with these bottle sounds. And I also have these kind of more percussive, like the shaker and like the kid's toy. And I put these on a choke group. So if you go into the pad selection, you can select a choke group for specific pads. And I choked out these pads with these hi-hats so that anytime I hit the bottle, it will stop the playback of that sample. Okay, so you can use that to create like hi-hat rolls. right? You can really play around with that and make it performable. Okay. The next thing that I did is I took melodic samples. So we have this guy. Okay. And I've set that to gate. So if you go into your simpler settings, make sure that this is on gate so that when you let go, it stops playing. Okay. Same with, this is the same sample. I might play around with adding a trippy effect. Okay. Same thing. Gate. Then I kind of doubled the speed and upped the pitch. Again on gate. And I played around with reversing this as well. And then I had that kind of bass line that we recorded and played through the OP1. So what I did is I just picked a note that I liked. Okay, so those are essentially two root notes and a couple other notes. So what this does is it creates your own performable kit that has like the main components of a song, right? You can do all sorts of fun stuff with this type of drum kit. We just scratched the surface because you can go ahead and add specific effects onto specific pads. So let's say you wanted to enhance the punch of your kick. You could select the kick, make sure that you have that pad selected, right? And then add a compressor, right? You could also do the same thing with maybe this sample. We wanna add some effect, right? And don't forget with a drum rack like this that you can go into your mixer view and select your drum rack to have all of your mixer for all of your drum pads, right? So if you wanna mix these, there's our kick, right? Turn it down. Here's our bottle, right? You can mix it here. All right, number four, we're gonna look at using an arpeggiator to trigger slices of a sample. And this is super handy because sometimes you hit wall trying to think up cool parts, motifs, or melodies, right? If I find myself 
kind of stuck, I'll usually default to a method that leverages some sort of chaos and randomness until I discover something cool and then start building around there. Okay, this is also a great technique if you don't want to worry about performing things on time or in key when you're flowing. All right, so we got this jam going. Got a drum beat. Cool melody. Right, but let's say I didn't know where to go from here. Went ahead and recorded two different MIDI clips. All right, so the next step is we're gonna go ahead and freeze and flatten these tracks, and then you can replace all the clips and the devices and kind of bake it into an audio sample, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna hold Shift and select that MIDI track. It's gonna bring up new options. So once it did that, it has frozen the track, so we can't actually change any of the device parameters. You'll notice that they're grayed out, but what we can do is hold Shift again, hit that track, and hit Flatten. And what this is gonna do is turn it into an audio sample. So now we have an audio sample of what we just played that's all in time with all the music we did and everything. And we can play around with the audio sample that we just created. All right, so now that we have those tracks kind of bounced down into an audio track, now what we're gonna do is load it into a simpler and play around with slicing it up, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit plus to create a new MIDI track. We're gonna go to instruments. We're gonna hit simpler, find simpler load this up just the basic simpler and then from here it's going to prompt you to load a sample we're going to go ahead and hit that button to load a sample i'm going to go back to the top directory we're going to go to current project samples processed freeze so you'll notice that we have a category four frozen samples that we created so we're going to do that and here's our two samples number one number two so i'm just going to load number one here into simpler and then over here, we're gonna go ahead and change this to slice. So now we can slice this sample up and I'm gonna go ahead and do this manually. So now we can slice this up how we want. So I'm gonna notice this. All right, so now that we have these samples sliced up, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add an arpeggiator. Okay, so let's go ahead to MIDI effects, arpeggiator. It doesn't really matter because we're not doing scale we're triggering pads so let's do housier than dao for some reason so now when you hold these pads it's going to be triggered with this arpeggiator all right so now i just stopped everything except for the drum beat okay and this is a great way to get a bunch of ideas right just start holding some of these pads Let's go ahead and try the same thing here. Let's just see what can happen if we just play around with some of these pads. That's pretty cool. Let's try something else. So sky's the limit, right? You can get a lot of cool stuff here just by playing around, which can get the ball rolling. All right, so now we're gonna go full circle here and do some trippy stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit a new audio track, okay? Just a default track. And I'm gonna make the input of this track the output of our sampler with our slices, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the mixer view, hit it again to go into input and output. So I've just made the input for this audio track be the output of our MIDI track, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is go back to our device view, go back here, and now I'm just gonna find something that I like and loop it for now. Let's try that. Now with that looping, I'm gonna go back to device here. I'm gonna to go to audio, okay? And we're gonna actually record arm this audio track and go here to record 
what's going on from this loop. So now we have an audio track uh, with the riff that we just recorded. Right. All right, let's move on to number five, which is legato sample playback. And I'm pretty sure this feature you can't find anywhere else other than push three. If you know somewhere else that you can do this, let me know in the comments down below. So essentially this lets you change the pitch of a sample in real time without affecting the timing or the playback, okay? And this one technique could help you stand out in whatever genre, whatever kind of music you're making, all right? So let's check it out, okay? So we're gonna use this piece of audio to use this playback sample technique. All right, so the first thing to do is you wanna hit convert and convert this piece of audio to a simpler, okay? And you're gonna let it do its thing. And now we have a new track with a simpler loaded with this piece of audio. All right, so we're gonna be in classic mode for simpler. And in this mode, you can play back this sample like a normal sampler would, where you can change the pitch, but it will also change the playback speed, right? Like this is twice as fast as normal. And then this is, you know, half as fast, but lower pitch, right? And you can repitch this and that might not be super handy for this sample. But what this lets you do is repitch samples on the fly. Okay, so we're gonna do this in a very unique way with this device. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into simpler and go into global, okay? And then from here, we're gonna make sure that this glide parameter is set to glide, okay? And the next thing we wanna do is set the voices to one, which will make it so that the sampler can only play back one voice at a time. Okay, and now when you play pads and legato at the same time, it's gonna transpose without changing the playback position. And for the best results for this, we wanna make sure that our warping mode is set to complex pro. So we're gonna go here and make sure that we have warp as four bars. Okay, then we're gonna to go to warp and we're gonna make sure that this is set to complex pro. All right, so just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and record a clip on top of this drum beat to show you what this can do, okay? So let's play that back. <laughs> Pretty goofy sample, but you get the point here is that you can leverage this technique, whether it be from sampling a record, whether you're recording an external synth like we looked at earlier, whether you're singing into the microphone, you're recording an instrument, or even just uh, resampling a MIDI clip that you just created. And then you can bring it into a simpler device and change the pitch in real time without affecting playback, which is such an epic technique. Boom, we just covered some badass advanced push three techniques and feel free to make these your own because sky's the limit with all of these techniques and I'm sure you can get creative and push these even farther. And I'm curious to know what have you discovered with push three? I'd love to know in the comments down below. And we just got really creative using the technical side of push three, using the recording feature, controlling an external synth, uh, converting things from audio tracks to simpler devices, um, freezing MIDI tracks, repitching samples, all this fun stuff. But there's a whole other side of getting creative with Push 3, and that is from the musical side and playing this like an instrument. So if you want to learn how to play Push as an instrument and become proficient in playing chords, melodies, rhythms, all that kind of stuff, I encourage you to watch this playlist where I go deep into all music theory that you need to know to master Push 3. All right, so if you're stoked for that, I'll see you in that next video.